Welcome, everyone. The market has been experiencing quite a lot of volatility this week thanks to the Fed and the Ukraine tensions. Of course, Omicron still being front and center in the news with almost 700,000 new cases, close to 2,600 deaths just yesterday alone. The pandemic continues to linger, doesn't seem to be going away. And today, we have back with us Gerald Kamis Young, the CEO of Todos Medical, to go over some new exciting news they just announced that might be able to help us put the pandemic behind us. Welcome, Gerald. Good to have you here again. Oh, thank you for having me. Very excited to have you here. Always a pleasure to speak. You just announced phase two trial results from hospitalized COVID-19 patients. There are people that are on oxygen support and ventilators. Looking at this data from a high level, it looks like you have a significant mortality benefit and not even remdesivir has been able to do that. Is it safe to say that your drug Tolivir has the potential to take dying off the table? Uh, Yeah, we believe that's the case. And we think that's the case because that's what the data is starting to show us across two separate studies. One are, you know, the observational study done in 2020, where we uh, eliminated mortality. Uh, there in that study, we treated all the way through until patients left the hospital. We also had a significant lower of time in the hospital. Uh, we had lower uh, biomarkers uh, of severe disease. So across the board, and, and what we saw with the data last week was virtually identical. Uh, it took dying off the table while, while you were on the drug. One patient did pass. Uh, who had a stroke, but that was uh, many days after they had the drug. Um, So there was a significant reduction, uh, 33% in the placebo arm versus 9% uh, all cause on our arm. Uh, You had a seven day reduction of time in the hospital, which is a huge endpoint. Uh, We had a significant reduction in terms of time till uh, stable disease or time to clinical improvement. Again, critical, critical piece of the puzzle. So bottom line is if you get in the hospital, you get better faster you get out of the hospital faster, you're much, much less likely to die. Uh, And if you have to go on uh, uh, oxygen, you're likely to be on oxygen significantly lower period of time based on all the data. So that, you know, that is the kind of data that remdesivir was hoping for Uh, when they first came out. Obviously, they still got approval and it's being used. um, But we think that our drug on top of what's out there now uh, really could dramatically change Uh, the course of the pandemic in the hospitalized setting, free up those hospital beds for patients who need them for other things outside of COVID. Absolutely. It all makes sense. And then what other drugs are you being compared to in the hospitalized setting, just for reference? Well, the big one is remdesivir. Uh, You saw Gilly had a a massive quarter. Um, They were just talking about that in Fierce Pharma, billions of dollars in sales in December alone uh, because of the huge spike in Omicron cases. Uh, So that, that is really who we're going after. Or, or who we want to be added to, just depending on the setting. We, we don't really see uh, hospitals in the healthcare you know, market taking remdesivir away from patients because it does have some benefit. But certainly, it looks like when you add tolivir, you have much greater benefit based on uh, the data we have from these two studies. And obviously, we're going to continue to gather additional data as we move forward. We think the data is strong enough to allow us to get EUA in certain places now. So you know, when you look at what remdesivir does, the course of treatment is somewhere anywhere between $2,000 and $3,500 $3, for a course of therapy. Um, you know, we when we've done our modeling, we see the value of ours greatly higher than that because it's reducing days in the hospital uh, on top of remdesivir, you know, a week uh, less in the hospital with the data we just showed. In the U.S. healthcare system, that can be anywhere between $10,000 and $100,000 per day. So you're talking about, you know, a significant, significant benefit uh, when you're ta- when you're treating uh, with uh, Tolivir. Uh, and so, you know, that's the target. Uh, we think we can add a lot of value by reducing those endpoints of people in the ICU, very expensive, people in the hospital, very expensive, and obviously reducing mortality. Uh, so, you know, remdesivir is definitely what we want to be compared to, and we think we're better than. Absolutely. No, great information there. And of course, another important milestone of the study was reducing the time of hospitalization. So your trial results showing a seven-day decrease in hospital stays. And this obviously has the potential to flatten that curve when you think about how many people are hospitalized. Can you quantify what that means to us in terms of hospital savings? Is this something that health insurers are going to find valuable? Uh, I think that is the number one endpoint for hospital insurers. Because, you know, days in the hospital, first of all, we all know the longer you stay in the hospital, the worse things, you know, things go wrong. Uh, So if you can get people out of that hospital, you keep them out of the danger zone. And that's really where you see the mortality benefit and you see some of the other benefits. Uh, So insurers and government should be all over that, especially because, you know, as the ICUs get full, what they do is they do something called triage. 
So they're not giving every patient the best care they can possibly give. They're figuring out which patients are the most likely ones to survive or who need immediate attention now. And the focus is on those patients and those other patients who may not be doing as well or less likely to survive, they're less likely to get attention. And obviously that increases mortality. So if you can get those people who are kind of just doing okay and get them out of the hospital faster because they start doing better, that makes more beds available faster for some of these other patients who are going to come in. Uh, and if you can keep that cycle going, you can clear the backlog at the hospital. You know, we heard from, you know, our physicians in, in our study that unfortunately they have to make some very difficult decisions when they're treating patients. You know, this is not an easy thing to do when you have a surge, like the surge we've seen with record hospitalizations with Omicron. And now we've got the son of Omicron, BA2, that's coming right behind it. And obviously there's the expectation of the next variant. If you can calm that cytokine storm down, get rid of or slow down the replication of the virus to a point where your body can overcome it, stop that cycle, get the patient feeling better and out of the hospital. That is tremendous value. And it also takes the strain off of the tremendous nurses and doctors who are out there working to keep, to keep us healthy. Um, it really will help them, uh, you know, especially with their mental health and other things. So we think that this is a huge benefit to the system. Uh, it's going to be a huge benefit for patients, for payers, for hospital staff. And this is something that is needed now. There's no downside. Got it. Okay, talk to us about priorities then as we're looking at all of this as a sum. What are the top priorities for the company moving forward into this year? All right, top priority right now uh, on a macro level for the company is we want to continue to grow our PCR testing revenue because that's doing quite well. And we think we can really ramp that up and, and keep that sustainable over the long term and add on CPAS neutralizing antibody and ultimately our Videsa test. So that, that kind of continue to grow our, our existing revenue base with testing is critical. Then obviously, um, you know, we have a dual track with our Tolo products. Uh, we have our Tolovid product, uh, which is a dietary supplement that's similar to Tolovir, but is not uh, approved to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease. It is approved as a 3CL protease inhibitor, and people are taking it uh, when they interact with the 3CL protease. That product is, is you know, really growing sales. Uh, we did a little under half a million uh, net net for the year of 20. Uh, 21 and already this month we're all, uh, for the month of January we're all near 300,000 and we are just starting our marketing so the organic nature of what we're doing is growing and that's providing a revenue base for the rest of our Tolo products now uh, Tolo Veer, uh, which is obviously uh, the blockbuster that we have in our pipeline that now is actually uh, on a path potentially for EUA in certain jurisdictions uh, you know, th that are a little smaller, who have a greater need. So we're in, in conversations with a couple of them now. Uh, and uh, that includes Israel, that includes Greece. And we're looking at ways to add data um, or to get the data into the point where we can get an EUA. So that's priority number one in the adult hospital setting. Priority number two, of course, is going to be in the pediatric hospital setting, because this is very safe. And we think that there's no reason we can't dose this to children. Uh, who are also in the hospital and have a similar or a greater benefit than what we're seeing uh, in adults. Then the next step is to move to the outpatient setting. So we've got interest uh, from a few different groups in Israel now about using this at the point of confirmation of a diagnosis. So you're talking about someone who gets diagnosed with COVID-19 and immediately starts taking uh, this product, Tolivir. This is very similar to what we've seen with Pfizer's product, so the Paxlovid. Um, and we think we, we can show uh, similarities or potentially benefits because we don't only treat the 3-cell protease, we also treat uh, the, the symptom-causing cytokine storm. Uh, so that's in the moderate setting. Uh, obviously, in the earlier settings, uh, I mentioned that that's somewhere where we're going to go to as well, uh, right before you get into the hospital, so to keep you out of the hospital. And then long COVID. Uh, this is something that's becoming more and more important as a chronic disease. Uh, I expect it to become the largest chronic disease in the world. You know, it's a pretty robust pathway, but the focus in the short term is going after remdesivir in the adult hospitalized setting with Tolivir. We think we can generate the revenue there to do all the other things we want to do. Outstanding. Gerald Kamis Young, CEO of Totos Medical. Always exciting to have you on. Always something new in the rearview mirror and always something coming up as we look ahead as well. So really excited to see this play out. Thank you again for being here. Thank you.